So node 15 is here. That's a good thing. It brings a lot of changes as well as some of the breaking changes as well with it. So make sure you are thorough with what's happening before you use node 15 in your projects. And because this is not a E1 version, then it means that it will not be LTS. So if you are looking for production support, then probably it's the best idea to wait for node 16 a little bit. So first things first, node 15 obviously comes with NPM 7, which we discussed last week. You can watch the video right here. And NPM 7 brings in itself a bunch of breaking changes, which I have discussed in detail in that video. So that is a big one. This bot controller and NAPI changes, these are not very high level changes in terms of, uh, you know, you using these things on a day to day basis. So I'm not really going to get into that. But NPM 7 and below, these are some of the changes which are really, you know, something which you as a developer would be interacting with as well. This one, throw on unhandled rejections, is personally my favorite and one of the breaking changes as well. I won't really say breaking changes because, well, is it a breaking change if you rely on your code breaking somewhere? So yeah, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this. But uh, throw on unhandled rejection really means that now the biggest impact is that promises in Node.js are going to crash your Node.js proce process. And this is a good thing, right? Why this is a good thing? Because earlier, if your promise failed, then you'll just get a warning and your event loop would just go on, right? which is super, super bad because um, if you are, your program is in a state where it has not handled an error, then it is most likely running in an undefined state, right? And really anything can happen in an undefined state of a program execution. So you never really want to have that state. And uh, by default, if you're promised you an error, then, well, your program would run fine, right? But with node 15, this has been solved. Now promises are also going to crash your program, which is a good thing, right? And if you are using promises for a long, and if you have seen errors in the console, you really know that node has been saying it for a very long time that in future, that promises will be crashing the node process. So make sure you handle this. And the day is here. This is the node version, which is going to not just handle your uh, rejections anymore. Right, so this is a big change. Let's just go ahead and see how this works. All right, so we are here. Let me just go ahead and see my node version. It's 13, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create a file called script.js. This is going to be a very simple file which starts a set time or maybe like set interval, right? And I'm just going to say console log, nothing fancy. Every second, console log, hello, right? And on the third second, I'm just going to crash the program or at least try to crash the program with a promise.reject. Now promise.reject is going to reject this promise with a certain value. But the main thing is we are not catching it, right? We are not doing anything like that. We are not putting it in an async await and try catch stuff. So this is going to probably crash our program on the third second most likely. So let's just go ahead and save this and let's just go ahead and run it with node script.js. Now remember we are on node version 13. So this version does not, you know, crash your program. So you see, we get unhandled promise rejection, but the game goes on, right? The play goes on. Node is still working. Your process is still working. Now, let's just go ahead and update to node 15. I'm going to use n for, you know, managing the node version and I do not have node 15 installed yet. So it's, you can see it's installing version 15 now. And it's gonna not really allow this sort of behavior, right? So now if you go ahead and see, I have got node 15. So let's just go ahead and run the same script again. But this time, hopefully what's gonna happen, you can see that the program crashes and your process exits, which is pretty sweet thing to happen, right? Because you always, always want your program not to enter an undefined state. So yeah, pretty cool feature, pretty cool, you know, thing which should have happened a long time ago, but here we are. So this is done, right? Then quick protocol is basically the underlying UDP transport protocol for HTTP3. Super cool stuff. I would probably want to create a different video altogether on HTTP3 and the progression from HTTP1, um, basically HTTP0.9. We discussed it a little bit in the crash course on the HTTP, I guess, but yeah, I did not go into HTTP 2 and 3 there. 
So it's a great, you know, sort of optimization of the TCP connection, which you have. And Node.js can natively now support HTTP3 servers, right? So earlier you probably had to put something which supports HTTP3 in front of Node if you really wanted to make use of it. But now Node can natively support that as well. So that's pretty cool. And again, this is experimental, it's not stable. So you have to enable it with a flag, but that's that's that, right? Then it has also upgraded the V8 engine, which again brings in a bunch of JavaScript features. Replace all is there with Node.js, pretty cool stuff again. Uh, replace all for people who do not know would just make it very easy to replace all the occurrences, occurrences in the string without using regular expressions. So if you have one, two, one, two, two, one. And if you want to replace all one with three, now you can do something like this, right? If you're using, I don't know, if you're using, uh, let's say an older version like 14.4, you could probably not do this thing because, well, Node did not support something like this. So if I just go ahead and copy paste this and close this bracket and you can see that replace all is not a function in Node 14. So that's again a new addition because of the upgraded V8 engine. So that's pretty cool again, and a bunch of features as well, right? So yeah, that's that's basically it for the changes in Node.js this time, and uh, a very good release overall, I would say a bunch of new features, you know, improvements in terms of uh, architectural decisions. I'm not really sure what I should call this, but yeah, this is a, this is a good de decision, right? upgraded npm a bunch of new things as well so yeah pretty interesting time for node and the whole javascript ecosystem in general so what do you think about node.js new features do you have any sort of uh, viewpoint on uh, when you'll upgrade your code bases to node 15 what's what's your take on this let me know in the comments below and if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for watching and i'll see you then in the next one